Hi guys and welcome back. For today's video, I have a very special guest with me. She is going to the US this fall as an undergraduate student. What particularly interested me about her case was that she is a US citizen and she never really thought about going to the US. She was thinking of doing JE. Um <laughs> she is going now because of some exam rule changes. We're going to know more about that when we talk to her. But now she is going and the most amazing part is that she got a full tuition waiver which is pretty awesome if you ask me i'm pretty sure she's stoked about it and she's also getting room and board for the first two years in this video i've talked to her about my curiosity is like why did she want to be here when she was a us citizen also wanted to know a lot about her scholarship details before we start please guys like this video because it takes so much effort you best believe to do collabs and subscribe to my channel cuz there's so much more to come without any further ado let's meet naomi so hi naomi would you like to introduce yourself hi everyone i am naomi i will turn 19 years old in a few days i am going to attend the university of houston this fall i'll be majoring in computer science and you're seeing me getting interviewed because i happen to have received a full scholarship to study yes So let's start with uh, your biological background. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So uh, my dad was working in the US when uh, my mom was pregnant with me. So I was born there. So was my elder brother. But uh, my parents wanted to move to India and stay closer to my grandparents. So we moved to India when I was around nine months old, and I've been here since. So my entire education has been here. that's really nice um do you like sometimes wish that you were you know you had grown up in us or something <laughs> i do sometimes yeah i really? feel like that lifestyle is completely different from the one i've grown up in and sometimes i wish i was uh you know brought up there but i'm perfectly happy with however things have worked out so what studies were you planning to do in india so um when we shifted to india we went to karnataka but after a few years we moved to andhra andhra pradesh where there is a lot of iit culture um i was also influenced by it and i wanted to crack iit like so many others so that was my goal to get into an iit and uh, pursue a btech bachelor of technology in computer science nice so can you tell in short like what changed in like why are you going to the us now so what changed was essentially the pandemic because of the pandemic firstly i could not read as much as i thought i should have in 12th grade so my rank to get into a good iit was not the one i was hoping for it was a rank was a bit more so i it was still good enough to get into an iit but not the one i was hoping for uh, and what also changed was the categorization so firstly i'm called an oci overseas citizen of india that is for um, people whose parents are indians but they themselves are not right initially ocis were considered indians and we would be counted the same way as indians and we had the privilege of extra girl seats if we were girls mm. uh, but with the pandemic ocis were considered foreigners so i would be counted only after everybody in general category and i didn't have the privilege of girl seats so basically i wouldn't get into an iit i had to take a drop drop year and prepare for iit again but that was not on my mind i was happy with whatever uh, preparation years i had put in i did not want to do that for yeah. any any more time and i didn't want to go to other indian universities because i don't know some some time along the way of the preparation it was embedded in my mind that it was either iit or not in india so i chose to go to the us nice yeah it must have been really hard like the decision when it came to you must have been really like you know heart shattering yeah it, it like turned my world upside down oh. for four years i was preparing for this and the year i take it they decided to change the rules so um but in a way i immediately started applying to us universities universities and that was you know it kept me it kept my mind off getting I'm sure upset you're so happy now <laughs> yes <laughs> did you ever think of going to the us before all of that happened like the pandemic situation and the rules changed and everything 
Did you ever consider US before that? Very surprisingly, <laughs> no. <laughs> because uh, since my entire education was in India, I think we thought like Indians, I, I wanted to get an undergrad from India. And I'm not used to living without my parents. So my parents were also like, you're still going to be a bachi uh, even in your undergrad, so stay with us and you can go to US for masters and maybe settle there. But undergrad was never uh, going abroad. <laughs> so you were planning to do masters in abroad then? Yes, that was the like future plan, but it wasn't very solid. Okay. But I guess, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it would have been solid eventually, I think. Yeah. What made you stick to JE all these years, even when you had a US citizenship? That's something that I am so curious to know. Cannot. I was like, wow, man, that's some dedication. <laughs> Although um, the idea of coaching institutes, preparing for IIT from sixth grade and, you know, Acting like there is nothing else to life other than IIT is just completely wrong to me. There is some value to IIT prep. It, you know, uh, helps you not be scared of making mistakes. You discover the joy of uh, solving problems on your own. You make so many amazing friendships, make connections with teachers, and just grow as a person. I think that's what made me stick. But I will say that it was not always positives. I did have my downs. Um, it there would be times where I was, I'd was i be so stressed and helplessness in the class of not being able to understand a single word um, and just feeling like giving up and going to watch Netflix instead of studying because it's just hard. But um, I had a group of best friends who were not into maths. They were in a liberal arts junior college. So they kept me in check with, with reality. Whenever I spoke to them, I'd be like instantly refreshed. So to anybody watching, I just want to say that if you are preparing for IIT, you do give your best, but know that if you don't get in, there is so much more to life. This You are only getting started. Oh, that's really nice. And such a wholesome <laughs> answer. I love it. <laughs> so now that you have a scholarship, do you think you would go back to JE? No. And the no, rules no thank you. <laughs> The rules were the same, but right? all seats, whatever, everything was on your terms and you still, like, you were offered a scholarship. Would you still go for J? That, that is a hard question because when I was preparing for IIT, like, all other doors were closed. It was just IIT. But only after I didn't get in, I was like, oh, there's something called U.S. universities and scholarships. So, I, I that would be a hard choice. Yes, <laughs> but I think with the knowledge I have right now, I would choose a U.S. university even if I had the chance to go to an IIT because one, I didn't get into the top IIT. I got to IIT Tharwad, um, which was still fun because my maternal family lives there and all and I could meet them, but uh, it's not the best IIT and scholarship in the U.S. trumps any IIT. So. And what, yeah. what, if, what if you didn't have a scholarship? I guess no, because it then it'd be like less affordable and I'd weigh the pros of having an IIT bag over going to the US. Okay, nice. Yeah, scholarship was, was a like game game changer. Right. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, now let's get into scholarship questions. I I actually get a lot of messages saying how do I increase my scholarship? But honestly, I just know the student athlete part of it. Like just right. the sports part of it, I don't know the normal process, very honestly. So I want to ask you a little bit about that. Um, how did you manage to get a full scholarship, first of all? So full scholarship process for different universities is different. I can tell you about mine. Yeah. Mine was a two-step process. One was to apply to the scholarship separately, other than the normal uh, admission application. Apply to the scholarship. And then once you get shortlisted, there is an interview round. So during the application process, they ask a few essays like, why do you want to come to our university was the essay I had. And it could be different for different universities. And uh, they also ask for a resume, which includes all your scores, your extracurriculars, the honors and awards. And oh, LORs, letters of recommendation also play a huge role. I had one from a professor in the, in the US, so I think that was uh, a big factor and I also included this JE advanced score in my honors and awards list and um, 
in extracurriculars i say if you are applying to uh, not very like ivy league colleges i say extracurriculars were not that important you need to have something to show that you weren't only studying but you don't need to have something uh, something big like you know being a student athlete right. just something to so to show that you are physically aware of yourself and like you know uh, take care of your body and not just study right so i did that not your uh, on and off in like 9th 9th grade i did it and 10th grade i did 11th i did like that okay um and scores are also obviously very important sat score um i think they open your application after reviewing your scores like that's the bar once they see your scores and you pass like a like a certain uh, minimum score only then they look at your extra curriculars your essays your lors so do maintain a consistently good gpa in high school and try to get a good sat score right and if uh, sat is optional then do maintain a good gpa score <laughs> right so if you yes i think only then and then they'll what look at your application yeah i think so if like you have a 1450 and you have a broad range of extra curriculars and there's someone else who has a 1470 but no extra curriculars i think uh, the 1450 person would be given a more weightage in the uh, admission right okay um and the interview round they ask you questions it could be any uh, any range of questions the questions i was asked was again why did you uh, choose our university and like what are your goals and why do you think coming to this university will help you achieve those goals so i'd say research your university and try to speak as much as you can about it don't praise it just show that you have information about it and that certain things match your goals also so i spoke about my interest in researching uh, nanoparticles the, that was the the professor that had written an lor for me was a nanoparticle scientist so i said that and there was there's also a nanoparticle research facility at uh so i combined that and i spoke quite a bit about the university so i think they like that um so research your university and try to uh stay grounded try to stay yourself don't change your accent just for the interview and don't try to um you know not be yourself in the interview they just want to judge that you're a good person and that you add value to the university when should one start applying to a to a university as far as you know scholarship is concerned i think you can start from the starting of 12th grade i was very late i started when my 12th grade finished and like a few months after that because this was not in my plan i started in late october and like i gave my application to the university on october 27th and i got an acceptance on november 1st because they were closing in decisions by that time early decisions so i'd say start in the start of uh, 12th because that's when early applications start and you get a broad view of all the colleges that are open and the scholarships they're offering and you will have plenty of time to write essays and frame them as much as you want right okay okay so what i used to think was you need to apply really early um if you want scholarships but no it just seems fair actually like 12th at the start of 12th standard yeah. it's just one hour one year from uh, your college journey so that's yeah. fair that's very fair i mean you can start researching <laughs> at from the end yeah. of 10th grade but i think applying would start in the beginning of 12th okay okay like seriously applying Right. You have a good good tip. I think start research from like whenever as soon as you can. End of tenth grade would be perfect to start researching ideas. If if going to abroad is really your plan, then start early. But applying can wait for a while. So how did you calculate GPA? That question is completely for me. <laughs> I don't know how to calculate GPA. So tell me. <laughs> wait, really? There there's just a website that that converts. Uh, your overall percentage to a gpa on a 4.0 scale okay but if you want an in depth conversion i think there's something called wes which takes like the 100 dollars for one conversion so that would be an official report and that's like a complete website on its own but normal conversion i just used a like online gpa converter right. <laughs> from indian scale to us scale I think I hopped on one side and it showed a 4.0 and I was like thank you this is what I needed I'll go back now <laughs>
<laughs> That's a good idea. How expenses? Of course, you don't have the tuition, which is amazing. Um, but you have other expenses like food, um, room, insurance. So, how are you planning to um, manage that? So, actually, my university, uh, the scholarship entails first four years of tuition and first two years of room and board. So, stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Third and fourth year room and board. I think I am eligible for some government uh, aid. I am eligible for loan too, but I don't think I want to start my debt so early. Yeah. So I just take the grant that the government will give because I'm a citizen, um, and then it will come down to affordable uh, money. So I think yeah. my parents yeah. will pay that much, please. <laughs> I mean, they're Indian, so they'll help you. Yeah, <laughs> they will. <laughs> Is it because you're a US citizen that you're getting a scholarship or do they have a lot of international scholarships like yours? Um, there are specific international scholarships as well. But this scholarship, it's called the Tier 1 scholarship, is open for all US citizens, international. Okay. It's, uh, it's just a merit scholarship and depends on your SAT, essays, all of that. So this is something mm -hmm. that that students can look out for yes okay. keep in mind that <laughs> so what are you most excited for apart from us meeting <laughs> for my <laughs> tennis game <laughs> we're gonna make that happen by the way yes we will <laughs> okay tell us what are you most excited for <laughs> so um i think i'm most excited for just getting started this gap year was quite long there were like different phases of it first was applying which went by so quickly and then getting admitted the interviews and then i took i went to karnataka my home state i was touring meeting relatives um and now it's like the final stage saying goodbye all of that so it's it's sad but i'm excited but sad You're but excited <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i will <laughs> That that is gonna happen. I was like, no, I'm not going to cry. I cried my eyes out. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it was yeah. So I I think I won't even like try to hold back because I just if I try to hold back, they'll just come back with yeah. vengeance. So yeah. I'm just gonna let them let them come. <laughs> well, these are all the questions from from me, Naomi. Thank you so much for doing this. <laughs> um thank you so thank much you for, for having your, me yes of course thank you so much for giving your valuable time and valuable information <laughs> i'm sure it's gonna help i'm literally you. free i have nothing else to do <laughs> but it's it's nice that you like willing to share all of this information mm -hmm. you know guys nomi also has a youtube channel um <laughs> so check it out shocker <laughs> we also did a youtube video together where i talked about my yes. application process and everything so you can check that out if you want and thank you again nomi for coming here thank you guys so much for watching like this video <laughs> subscribe to the channel and subscribe yeah thanks for having me gaji this was wonderful <laughs> of course okay bye then bye guys bye.